Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here with a quick Photoshop tutorial. We're going to transform this clean black and white text into this kind of super blurred out, stylized, grungy effect. Two things happening in here. The very simple part is the grunginess. I've got just two textures on top, which we will take a look at. The other element is this really, really heavy duty blur that kind of ramps up in some places and leaves other places relatively sharp. We're gonna check out a nice way to achieve this effect. Let's jump right into it with a simple document, just some live text and a white background. The font is Futura. Two things to mention right out of the gate in regards to this blur effect. One, we can't use live type. We're gonna to have to rasterize this text one way or another. I could just right click and select rasterize type. That would give me a rasterized version of this exact layer with a transparent background. But that brings me to point number two. You don't have to do it this way, but there is an advantage to having the text merged with a background layer. It doesn't have to be white, but using a filled in background rather than transparency. So what I'm gonna do here is make a merged copy of both of these layers with the shortcut Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E in Windows. Sometimes you're working on a design where you really need that transparency and that's fine, but I'm gonna point out a nice feature of doing it this way if it makes sense for your design. So let's get this blur effect going and it probably seems at first glance like the way to do this would be to paint a mask on this layer, use the lens blur effect with the source set to layer mask and that does give you this sort of localized blur effect. However, since Photoshop 2020 came out, lens blur just doesn't look the same. It might look better now for photographs, but the effect now has this character of exaggerating the whites. And with something like text, you get these weird kind of wobbly blur shapes with the white eating into the black. By the way, this lens blur thing totally screwed up my technique in the spray paint text effect video. So I've got a new video coming up with a new and improved way to do the spray paint text. Anyways, I'm gonna say let's pass on the lens blur effect and let's try the blur tool. That should do it, right? We'll crank it way up to 100 and get a really heavy duty blur. Hmm, okay, never mind. All right, instead, the way I prefer to do this is not with a blur filter or a blur tool at all. It's with the smudge tool, the little finger paint icon in the same section as the blur tool, generally used for digital painting or other smudging. What I'm gonna do is set the strength on this tool to 50%. And if I drag this across the image, it actually looks a lot like the liquify filter. But unlike liquify, it's not just smearing things around, it's also making them super blurry. So how can we use this to our advantage? Well, with a little technique I like to think of as the shake and blur. So let me back up a little bit, and all I'm gonna do is just click and shake things around a little bit. It's basically using the smudge tool, but without smudging things, without going anywhere. Smudging in place, if you will. So we're getting the benefit of this nice blur that comes along with using the tool, but without getting that kind of whole liquify, smearing and smudging effect. All right, just to get into the details, I'm using a soft round brush. Actually, you kind of need to have the soft round brush for this to work. Strength is set to 50% and I have the size at about 300 pixels. I can always size the brush up or down using the open and close bracket keys. I will say that once you get above about a 400 pixel brush, the program does start to lag on my machine at least. You can still use the same technique, but not with quite so much freedom. And there are a couple things I like about blurring things this way. One is that whether you're using lens blur or this technique, either way you have to kind of paint where you want the blur to be. But with lens blur, it's a little more guessing because you don't really know what the blur will look like until you're done painting a mask and then you apply the effect. I also like this tool because I can put some texture on top and then continue to dial in the effect. So I'm gonna drop a grungy paper texture on top. This is from the texturelabs.org site, which is nothing but tons and tons of free textures. This is all stuff I've created and photographed specifically for this kind of use. And this texture is balanced at 50% gray. So it's specifically designed for your contrast blending modes like overlay and soft light. Let's go a little heavier and set it to hard light and I just made a bunch of new grungy paper textures, so let's use another one. This one is balanced toward black, so this is gonna work well on the light and blending modes. We'll set it to screen mode. And I really like this combo of grungy texture on top of something soft and blurry. It's actually an aesthetic I see somewhat frequently on Instagram. I think it's really cool. Don't know for sure whether this is the technique people are using, but whenever I'm creating a graphic that needs this kind of localized blur, I've actually stopped using lens blur and just started really using this smudge tool all the time. All right, one more point I wanna make about this tool. I mentioned at the beginning of the video this works fine with transparency, but in this case, I merged it first with a white background. 
And that's specifically so I could use this option in the tool to set it to lighten and darken mode, which doesn't really work right with transparency. So the darken mode is going to create this blurring kind of effect, but just as it sounds like, it's only going to darken things. So you get a little bit of this kind of bleeding ink look. It's something I would use just in moderation, maybe like I'm doing here. Once I've got things really blurry, I'll set it to darken. Maybe just choose a few places to give it kind of a broken photocopier effect. Lighten would probably be more useful if this were white on black. So if I invert this layer, lighten would give things more of a blown out light bloom kind of look. You get the idea. Anyways, kind of a fun process and aesthetic here. It never turns out the same way twice for better or for worse. I hope this might be useful to you guys. If so, please do click on the like button. Be sure to subscribe if you like this kind of thing. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.